The U.S. House of Representatives had advanced, has advanced the $95 billion aid package for Ukraine, Israel and the Indo-Pacific. And this comes following Friday's vote where Democrats managed to push the legislation past the Republican opposition. The vote is an enormous victory in the long-running effort to send aid to Ukraine, a decision that was stalled in the U.S. Congress for months. Friday's vote passed 316 against 94, garnering more support from Democrats than from Republicans. 165 Democrats voted in favor of the measure and at least 151 Republicans backed it. In addition to the aid package, the bill also includes transferring of frozen and sanctioned Russian assets to Ukraine. The Ukraine aid package of $61 billion also includes $9.1 billion for humanitarian aid as a part of a forgivable loan demanded by the Democrats. Everyone can vote their will and their, their constituents' desires on the Israel aid, the Ukrainian aid, the Indo-Pacific, and then our fourth uh, national security package that has all of our innovations in it. Because we did this process, we got a better outcome here. We have uh, a lot of innovations that the Senate did not consider. Johnson noted that the bill needs the Biden administration to provide a plan over what it aims to achieve in Ukraine. The legislation is now expected to enter the Senate on Saturday after the aid package passes there. Now, U.S. President Joe Biden will be required to sign it into a law, a move that the White House has said will take no time. We want to get that out of the House, obviously, out of the Senate. To the, to, uh, to the desk of this president and he will sign it right away so that the brave people of Ukraine can get that aid. We know what Mr. Putin wants to do. He wants to take over uh, their sovereign territory and we cannot allow that. Well, the plan is required to be presented within 45 days of signing of the bill by U.S. President Joe Biden. The new bill contains queries around specific objectives of the aid package and the security implications for the U.S. if those objectives are not met. In a Friday meeting of NATO members, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky again pressed for increased air defense systems from his Western allies. Now, with increasing Russian aggression at the borders, Kiev has asked for at least seven Patriot missile systems from the alliance. NATO's Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg has pushed for increased Patriot missile batteries for Kiev. While the Secretary General refused to comment on which NATO allies own these systems, he said he was expecting a response from member countries very soon. Now, Patriot missile batteries can take up to two years to make. While some countries have them, their reluctance to lend some comes over the fear of falling short of these batteries. Germany has a total of 12 Patriot missiles, but is only supplying three to Ukraine. Poland, which shares a border with Ukraine, has two and requires them for its own defense.